Hello and welcome back to another Animal Can Code video. My name is Yuma and I am a 5 time Apple Worldwide Developers Conference Scholarship winner and I have also published 11 apps in the App Store. Now I'm very excited that WWDC is around the corner and this means that some of you would be interested in applying for the scholarship or the Swift Student Challenge. And I encourage you to do so because it is such a great experience and a way to show your enthusiasm for coding. I've been a part of WWDC every year since 2017, and before the pandemic, the winners would go to California to attend the conference, learn from the engineers at Apple, visit places such as the Steve Jobs Theater, and have lots of fun. To apply, you need to create a project with Swift, which will be then judged for its creativity and technical skills. So if you want to participate in the competition or just want to know how to use Swift Playgrounds, I'll be showing you how to do just that. One of my first games was a jackpot game I made when I was seven, and it's a simple JavaScript game which you can play on my website. So I thought it'd be fun to improve this by making a 3D game and show you how to do it in Swift Playgrounds. So, this is what we're going to be making today. It's quite a simple game, you start off some money, in this case it's $10, you pull the lever and the reels will spin. These cylinders are actually called reels, I had to google it, but if you win, you gain some money, and if the money goes down to zero, it's game over. When the winning icons line up, that being the ducks, you win. In this case, you won an Apple WWDC scholarship. Of course, if you're applying for WWDC, winning is not random. In fact, it puts your creativity and technical skills to the test. In this video, I'll use Swift Playgrounds on a Mac. You can follow this tutorial on an iPad or Swift Playgrounds, but I'm only using my Mac because it's easier for me to type and record this video. Anyway, with this tutorial, you'll learn how to use SceneKit, SwiftUI, and Swift Playgrounds. The 3D models were made in Blender, which is a free 3D application. I won't show you how to use Blender because I want to focus on coding the app. Besides, there are many great Blender tutorials out there on YouTube and just everywhere on the internet. Once finished, the model was exported as a GLTF or USDZ file. I then used Xcode to assemble the slot machine as a scenekit.scn file. This is also where I positioned the camera and set a background color. I find that putting the 3D models together is way easier to do in Xcode as I'm showing you now. You could do this in playgrounds with uh, code, but it takes a bit more time to load 3D models and position them. The other alternative is Reality Composer and Reality Kit, but we're not using it right now because I found it to, to actually take longer than Sync Kit, and the spinning for reels was a bit of a challenge with Reality Kit. Now, for your convenience, I am actually providing you the .scn file and the 3D model in the link below, so you don't need to use a Mac or Xcode to do this if you're following along. This tutorial can be done completely with an iPad. Alrighty, so with all the 3D stuff mentioned and you know, without out of the way, let's get straight into making the playground. One thing I do want to quickly mention or bring up is that if you want to check out some of the uh, other things I've made with Swift Playgrounds or if you want to have a bit more of a comprehensive tutorial on Swift Playgrounds, uh, then you can go check them out in the links you know, down below in the description. Uh, however, if you just want to, you know, get a playground up and running for, you know, WWDC, for your own little experiments, by all means, this uh, tutorial is basically more than enough uh, to get you started on that. So, on the bottom left corner of your Playgrounds app, there's a button to add a playground. So, let's just click on that. That's going to add a new one. I'm going to right click on it, uh, rename playground, and call this Jackpot 3D because that's basically the name of it, or that's basically what it is. Uh, anyways, I just double click to open it, and I'm just going to guide you around what we have right here. So on the left side um, are, is our basically our files, our source code. Uh, main is our main playground, and then we have user module, and inside that uh, all the little Swift uh, files to store other things in. Uh, this main is only going to be what we're going to use to give a playground page to display the uh, content view. That content view uh, being what displays, you know, the uh, the game. So let's go click on shared code. I'm going to rename, right click and rename it to content view because this is a Swift UI view that is going to contain all the stuff. 
By the way, I do have some SwiftUI tutorials if you want to learn a bit about SwiftUI. Um, you know, they're, they're on my uh, YouTube channel. But anyways, inside the content view, I'm going to import SwiftUI. And I'm going to create a public struct. Uh, and it's going to be called content view. Uh, this is going to be off type view. It's our own little view to uh, create the game. The reason why this view is public is because uh, for this main file to actually access the content view, uh, this needs to be marked as public so it can be accessed by other files. So, uh, or other modules actually. Uh, but yes, so, you know, other files essentially. Uh, and so for that, we also need to create a way uh, for this uh, content view to be created as an instance. So we need to actually create a public in it. Uh, in it's uh, being short for initializer. Um, and so that's just going to be empty. That's just basically the bare bones in it. I'm not going to go into depth uh, in terms of that. Now let's uh, let, let's add a body. This body is going to be uh, where we're going to put all of our text, all of our user interface, all the 3D stuff inside uh, here. So I'm going to type in body autocomplete down the bottom is very helpful. It comes up with a suggestion. So I press return and some view. Okay, so I'm going to uh, put some code braces and this inside here is we're going to where we're going to put all of our view and text and stuff. Uh, before we go ahead any further, I'm going to switch back to main, uh, the main file, import uh, playground support, and I'm going to do uh, a few things: playground page dot current dot set live view to a instance of the content uh, content view. Uh, the other thing, uh, actually, what this does is it sets a live view to the content view, meaning that when we hit run my code on the bottom right, it's going to display content view. Uh, and then we're going to do playground page dot current dot once full screen live view and set that to true. Full screen live view just means that uh, when we hit run my code, it's gonna uh, it's going to basically uh, make the live view uh, a full screen view uh, just so it fills up the entire section because I can just drag this across and this is what oh well playground's just crashed. <laughs> Let me open that uh, up again. Oh, that was great. <laughs> but uh, I guess I'm going to try not to drag it. Uh, but yes, so if I drag it across, uh, that's what full screen looks like. I mean, you, you'll see it later. Uh, I don't really need to explain that right now. Anyways, back in the content view, uh, first thing that we need to add is a Z stack. A Z stack is basically whatever is inside the Z stack would be overlaid on top of each other. And so uh, that's why we're going to put the 3D scene uh, up back in the background, just up here. And then in front is going to be the text. That's what the Z stack is, is for. Uh, what we're going to get started with is actually the text and all that. So we're going to put a B stack inside the Z stack, which is a vertical stack that goes from top to bottom. And um, we're actually going to have to add some variables outside of the body. Uh, these variables are just going to uh, be at state var uh, money, set to 10. We're going to also have one for whether or not we are, uh, we've lost the game, so game over. Let's do false. We haven't, uh, it's false by default because we haven't actually lost the game. We don't actually lose the game the moment we start because that's not really a game if that's the case. And we're also going to have one for uh, one if we've won or not, except it's false. Of course, we don't win by default. That's, uh, it's not really a game if that doesn't happen or if that does happen. Uh, but yes. That's essentially all we need for this vStack. So inside this vStack, we're going to add a group. This group is going to contain a host of things, including the text for whether for when we win and when we lose. Actually, it's not really a host of things because it's only two things that we're adding. So uh, if we're one, if we've won, we're going to add some text. Or if we've won, we're going to display some text that says, uh, I'm going to copy this over because it also does include some emojis. So let me just uh, copy this over, paste, and there we go. So it says you've won a WWDC scholarship. Uh, this is basically just uh, a WWDC themed 
themes, you know, winning thing. Uh, we're gonna add a modifier to say that it's bold. Um, just so it's you know bold text. Uh, and if that's and so if we haven't won yet, we're also gonna check if we have lost the game. And if we've lost the game, then we're gonna have some text that says game over. That is something that I'm also gonna have to copy over because it also includes emojis. So let me just copy that text inside the string, game over. And we're also gonna make that bold. Now, uh, now because both of this text is bold, uh, we actually have to do have to have both of them set to bold. Uh, for, some, for some of you who, who have used uh, Swift UI before, you guys, uh, some of you might be uh, aware that uh, the modifiers, uh, if I set a modifier in this to this group, it actually applies it to the text inside. The group is actually an empty shell, uh, essentially. Now, I can't actually add a bold modifier to this group because bold only uh, can be applied to text, and because group is just an empty shell, it's just not allowed. So, uh, what we can do though is we can set the foreground color or the text color uh, inside here. So, this color is going to be a red, green, and blue value, um, just color. Uh, we're creating color of uh, red 0 0.65, green 1.0, and, and blue 0 0.98. We're also going to set a font, a system font. Uh, so this is this one is going to be a dot system font. Uh, and we're going to set that to a size of 50, if I can actually type properly. So this size is just a system font with a size of 50. And that's our font modifier uh, complete. So let's uh, run my code and let's take a look at this uh, text, which isn't appearing because I've actually set game over to, because I need to actually set game over to true or one to true. Uh, there you go, game over. Let's set game over to false. And if we've won, it should display something else. Now, it does get split into three lines because it's quite big, but if I actually, if it's actually full screen, which isn't actually being set now. If I need to, I probably need to drag the uh, the line here across, and then let me just move myself up to the top right corner. I'm gonna run the code, and it's very good. It's gonna automatically set it to a full screen thing, which doesn't do it all the time for some odd reason. But yes, uh, also I'm running my code just by you know hitting that run my code button. Of course, you know the other tutorials do uh, explain that, but you know you're following this tutorial run my code, that's a button down the top bottom look right to uh, run your code. Uh, and it just does those different magical things. Now, um, that text is actually right like smack bang in the center. Uh, as you saw in the preview, you know, the demonstration of the, what we're actually making, it should be at the top. So let's uh, put a spacer after this group to just push it upwards. There you go. Now it's at the top. Um, Okay, now all right, we have a spacer, and then now we're gonna add, add a h stack, uh, and this h stack is a, a horizontal stack uh, below the spacer, which is down the bottom, uh, that just goes horizontal. So uh, first of all, we need a spacer to uh, push uh, the content to the right to the right, and this uh, content is gonna be uh, some text that says dollar sign, uh, and we're gonna inter interpolate the uh, money. So we're putting the uh, how much money we have inside this text. So this just basically grabs the uh, money variable and displays it as a string uh, and just puts it inside the text, of course. Um, and then a few modifiers that we need for this text, uh, foreground color, uh, this is just some text, uh, or this is just a color. This is a different color uh, this time. You know, this uh, color here is blue, but we want a yellowish color, 0.92. And the blue is 0.15. Now, if we uh, display it, it's right down, like it's really tiny in the bottom right. He wants it to be a bit uh, larger, so let's do the foreground. Let's uh, do another font, uh, font thing. So font to again a system font, but this time the size is going to be 60. We're also going to give it a bold font. Um, and a bit of padding, uh, just so it doesn't, you know, stick uh, in the bottom right corner. And that's essentially it. So uh, outside of the V stack, the giant V stack itself, 
I'm gonna add some extra padding for these, just so the uh, both the text, both text, uh, or you know, there's a bit of space. And then right outside for the uh, Z stack here, which is like right up here, uh, we're gonna add another uh, modifier for ignore safe area. So ignore safe area just means that it's uh, it will just have the content. Uh, you know, fill up the entire view. Um, sometimes the the safe area is just there for some reason. Like, you know, if, if you have an iPhone 10, there's a notch. So anywhere below that is like the safe area. So that's what the safe area's like purpose is. So there you go. Now it's, uh, it's working quite well. And that I believe is everything that we pretty much, uh, almost everything that we need for this, uh, Swift UI uh, content view, the user interface. So we're gonna get, uh, we're gonna start on the game view controller or, or the sync it 3D stuff. So below the content view, I'm just gonna create a game view controller representable. Uh, this is what's gonna bridge this Swift UI stuff with uh, the scene kit, the 3D uh, UI view controller. So this is gonna be off type UI view controller representable. So as the name may suggest, it's a Swift UI representation of a UI kit view controller. UI kit is, uh, if you didn't know, a different uh, framework for displaying this, you know, 2D UI in, uh, user interface. Um, so that's why it's just being bridged together. So we need two things. Uh, one uh, is a function called make UI view controller. The other is a function called update view controller. These are just requirements for uh, a struct that is called UI, that is a UI view controller representable, which is, a, I have to say, a mouthful to uh, to actually speak out loud, to say out loud. So I, I'll try not to say it as many times as I, you know, try try not to say it as many times uh, throughout this video. But yes, inside this, uh, so first of all, um, the UI view controller that we're going to have is specifically a of type game view controller, which is our own custom UI view controller that we're going to make. So that's why uh, I'm gonna replace this some view, uh, some UI view controllers with game view controller, uh, just so it's a bit more specific. Um, and then uh, under UI update UI view controller, it's passing a passing in an, a UI view controller. We just set that to the game view controller. So uh, this U update view UI view controller. Leave as uh, as blank. We don't really need to do anything when the view controller is uh, updated, but when we're making it, we need to actually feed in what we're going to make. So we just return game view controller, which we haven't actually made yet. But that's that's what we're returning, and we can actually delete return because this is the only statement inside the function. So you know it can assume that this is what uh, what we're suggesting it, that should be returned. We have a bunch of angry little ring, uh, red dots saying uh, that are going to say, oh yeah, this game view controller doesn't exist yet. Let's uh, leave that for later because we are going to make it. And up the top of this uh, Z stack, we're going to make, uh, we're just going to feed in this game view controller representable so it can be displayed in, this, uh, in the content view. So to create this uh, game view controller uh, view that the, red, that the angry red error dots are uh, shouting at me, um, about our, uh, we are going to go over to the user module, just hover over it um, on the left side of the window and press plus to add a new file. We're going to call this file game view controller. So game view controller, what do we need? Well, we need to import a few, three different things, UI kit, scene kit, and combine. So UI kit is, you know, the thing I've been talking about, scene kit that handles the 3D aspects of things and combine is how we're going to pass data from this game view controller to content view. It's how we're going to tell it, oh yeah, we've won, we've lost, or, you know, you, you need to update this money. Um, and uh, if you're actually a bit curious, or I'm not sure if I, if I mentioned it before, but at state is uh, required for you to, uh, it's basically allows you to update the view automatically whenever these variables have uh, changed or the values have changed. Uh, this, yeah, so let's, uh, actually, back in content view, we should probably set one to false. 
because we haven't actually won yet. Uh, we're just going to keep that as a default value before we forget. And we're going to create a public class so it can be accessed by the constant view. Let's call this game view controller. This is of type UI view controller. And uh, there are a few things that we need to put inside here. First of all, we need a scene. So we, let's create an SEM scene. Uh, we also need a scene view, uh, which is an SEM view. Uh, SEM view is basically a scene kit view. Uh, that's what scene view means. So uh, we're also going to put in view to load. So uh, this is just something that's supplied by game view controller. Whenever the view has been loaded, let's also pass this up to the uh, you know the the boss, the UI view controller, and tell it that tell super view did load, or tell it you know that the view has been loaded. So just super dot view did load. Um, it's not the by the way, it's not the end of the world if if you don't include it. It's just you know a general thing that you should probably you know include. So uh, when we're setting up the game, uh, we can do that stuff inside view did load. So I'm going to create a separate function just to keep this code clean set up. I'm going to call this function here. And setup is going to let us uh, create uh, set the scene views frame or you know the the, uh, the position and sizing. Uh, this can be a CG rec. And we're creating new CG rec. The uh, origin or position is going to be set to zero, which is basically the top left corner of the screen. And the size is the views frame size. So we're just getting the uh, size of the, uh, the view, basically. Um, and that is, I think, oh yeah, these are angry, re these angry red dots, they're, they're gone. So that's good. Um, and we're going to set, uh, in setup, we're going to set the scene to a new SCN scene. And we're going to grab the, uh, an, a scene called game.scn. And this .scn file is the .scn file that I was talking about in uh, earlier when I was talking about the .scn file that we were uh, going to use it, that you can actually download. Uh, let me just drag this uh, these finder windows because uh, there's a bit of a bug uh, in terms of playgrounds for at least for uh, for me. This uh, plus icon up the top of the uh, uh, the window when I press plus. Uh, you can actually add some different things. Uh, I'm gonna go over to this paper icon. I'm trying to insert a file, but it doesn't work. Um, so uh, the, the workaround for this that I uh, that I know will work is I'm gonna right click uh, on the the playground itself. Uh, this is under files. Uh, oh, by the way, this bug probably won't happen to you. I'm just using a beta version of Mac OS Monterey. So maybe that's interfering with something, but I'm not exactly sure. Anyways, I just have to right click on this uh, jackpot 3D file, click show package contents, and then uh, under contents, I'm gonna add a new folder called uh, private resources. And this is just how SwiftUI uh, grabs a file, uh, grabs its you know other resource files. So I'm kind of like doing a bit of hacker stuff quote unquote hacker stuff. This is not anything remotely close to hacking. Um, but uh, I'm gonna grab the game.scn and just drag it in here. Actually, I might just copy it just just so I don't you know lose it in here because I still do need to upload it to YouTube uh, for you to actually be able to download it. So I'll just keep it in here, just saving there. All right, so private resources, it's there, it's all good. So we can continue, uh, we can do scene view scene view dot scene set the scene to scene uh, so we just grab the scene put it inside the scene view scene so we know uh, so it knows which scene which scene to display it's a lot of scenes in that uh, sentence and then inside the scene view we're also gonna uh, set allow cam allow camera control to true this way we can actually uh, get the uh, scene view to uh, con to control the camera so we can actually pan around the, the, the scene, you know, by dragging, uh, and it's really cool. I'll show you uh, by pinching, dragging, whatever. And then uh, after that, we're going to do view dot add sub view scene view, and that basically puts the scene view inside the uh, the view controller. Um, 
first of all, uh, when we actually run and we code, let's uh, go over to the left and let's uh, disable enable results under the speedometer. This actually increases the performance because enable results for some reason really likes a playground. Uh, and it's really important when you're dealing with like AR or uh, scene kit stuff. And it doesn't seem to be loading, which may be uh, because I need to uh, close this playground and open it. Let's see if that fixes it. Uh, speedometer, disable that results option and see and hope that it works. And it does indeed work. Amazing. This is a this is a breakthrough in science. We have created a jackpot scene and we have added it to a game view controller. Amazing. We have achieved the greatest feats in the world. We can go out there, we can become scientists, we can innovate the world with uh I don't know what I'm going on about. Ignore me. <laughs> but yes, uh, let's create a new function uh, called pair nodes. And this is just how we're going to fetch the, uh, the arm and the different reels because we're going to be using those for later. Now, uh, let's just, you know, uh, feed in the uh, other different variables that we need inside this uh, game view controller. So let's just uh, up, up here uh, create the uh, just constant called real faces. Uh, set that to four because there are four different uh, icons inside each reel. Uh, and this is just used for some of the, uh, the rotation math when we're spinning the reels. Uh, and then I'm also just going to put in a variable called arm, which we're going to set inside the prepare nodes function. Uh, we also need to add the reels, which is just going to be an array of SEN node. SEN node, by the way, is just uh, any objects inside the uh, scene, scene, scene kit. No, scene. Yeah, scene kit view, or scene kit scene actually. So each reel, uh, there's three of them, that's why I'm making an array, so it's like a list of items. And then um, what else do we need? We need to actually uh, have some data that we need to uh, keep, which is one of them being the real indexes. Can be uh, zero, zero, and zero. So zero is basically uh, just the, these icons here. One is going to be the uh, icon after it. So it's basically just for us to keep track and check if uh, any of these are actually uh, matching up. And if they, um, and it also lets us uh, randomize the each index um, and each number basically represents you know each icon as I said before. Um, we're gonna take in the money, uh, set that default to ten. Basically just the same as what we had in content view. Uh, and then we also want one for when we're uh, rolling. So once we've uh, hit that lever, once it's, you know, the reels are spinning, we don't want it to be able to uh, be spun again while it's rolling, because that's going to have some pretty disastrous consequences. Imagine rolling twice in one go. Like, I don't think that's physically possible. Uh, anyways, we're going to have another uh, variable for when we win. And we're going to set it to false. So all these are just default values. Anyways, let's uh, head back to prepare nodes, and we're actually going to call this in uh, booted load, just first of all. And we're going to uh, set the arm, which is currently empty, to scene view dot scene. Oh, Shane, you don't need to do that, because we already have scene as a variable. So scene dot root node, uh, root node dot child node. So we're just grabbing a child of the scene, something inside the scene. Uh, and the name of that is arm, uh, as I put there. Recursively false, uh, just gonna leave it false. I don't really uh, feel like I need to explain it uh, because it's not required. It's not something I really need to cover in this tutorial. So just to leave as false. Um, and then for a for loop, I'm gonna do for i and one dot 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 three. So it's gonna have this uh, variable i uh, loop through the different uh, numbers of 1, 2, and 3. So, uh, we're going to do reels.end uh, and we're just going to add a new item to the array, which is an SEN node. So, uh, by this we're just going to fetch it uh, and then we're just going to 
the name uh, this time is going to be real. And then we're going to have to interpolate that i. So it's real 1, real 2, and real 3. Uh, I just made it really convenient for us because, you know, I'm the one who made the scene. Uh, the left real is 1, real 1. The middle real is real 2. And the real on the right is real 3. And uh, this is actually saying uh, it might be an optional value uh, because this uh, this uh, this SCN node may not actually be uh, you know something that that can be found. Uh, as for the other variables, which or as for the arm that we're setting, uh, it doesn't actually have a requirement that has to exist. It's just for this array here. Um, so root node. Uh, we're just gonna. Uh, uh, we're just gonna. Gee, we just need to set that to uh, put an exclamation mark at the end of trial node just to say, oh yeah, this is definitely gonna exist. Um, so don't worry about it. You don't have to worry about whether or not it exists. But if you have this exclamation mark and it ends up being nothing, or I can't find it, the thing's just gonna crash. So it's uh, kind of unsafe. But we know that it's going to exist. I mean, I'm quite certain it's going to exist unless some tragic event happens. I don't think that's going to happen. All right, so we've got we've got all that done. We've set up, you know, we know what the arm is now. We know the different reels that we can spin. We've just assigned that to each variable. We're all set up for the uh, what we need, so, which is a touch, uh, the, you know, the, the spinning. So we need to uh, type in touches began. And our lovely uh, autocomplete comes in and helps us. So touches began basically gets triggered whenever you tap on the screen or you, you click, you tap, you, you click or tap. You know, if you're on iPad or Mac, whichever thing you're on. Anyways, uh, so what we need to do is we need to check if we can grab the uh, touch location and also what uh, what object or SCN node that or what node that uh, we tapped on. So. Uh, these can be done with a guard player. If the thing exists, okay, you can go through. It's like a guard. If, if it exists, you can go through. But if it's not valid, sorry, you can't go through. And we're just going to exit the function as if nothing ever happened. So, uh, the touch location, uh, we're going to have a one uh, constant called touch location, which is touches dot first dot uh, location in view. So this is basically just letting us uh, grab the touch location inside the view, the views, the view controller's view. Uh, and then we're going to get another one called hit test, uh, which is going to be the scene view. Uh, we're going to grab the scene view and do a hit test, uh, just checking if there's any uh, nodes at the point that we specify, that point being the touch location. And for the options, we want this to be dot root node. So we're going to set the root node equal to arm. Uh, and this root node is actually the the objects that's going to be checked. So we're, by setting to arm, we're basically limit, limiting it to the arm only. So if it finds anything in, within the arm, because the arm is actually made of different objects, then you know it'll find. Oh yeah, there's something the hit test. Otherwise, it will just be uh, it will just return nil. Actually, hit test. We don't need hit test. We can just remove flat hit test, but we just need to make sure that it's not empty by adding exclamation before it. So if it, if this uh, value here is not empty, and we all can we can also get the touch location, then that's all good. Otherwise, or else you return. Inside here, I'm going to add another function called roll slots to do all of that rolling. And roll slots. There you go. So uh, another thing we're going to do is I'm going to have uh, inside this roll slots, we just need to make sure of uh, a few things. We need to make sure we're not already rolling. We also need to do, make sure that we haven't won the game yet. We also need to make sure we're not out of money. Otherwise, return return means we, we just get out of the function. Easy, easy done. Uh, anyways, if all that you know satisfies the statement, well, we can continue for rolling. So we're going to set rolling to true just to make sure that, just to you know, make sure that we know that hey, we're we're rolling. So uh, you know, yeah, um, and then of course we're gonna 
get rid of uh, one dollar. So money minus equals one. Uh, under this, we're actually gonna do uh, some combined stuff, you know, uh, to pass that data or information onto the constant view. So the, you know, this dollar sign could be updated. We'll, we'll, we'll deal with that later. For now, let's uh, make sure the arm can actually uh, rotate. So, uh, or move. So we need to create a rotate action, which is an SCN action. Yes, you know, so we just need to, an action is, you know, an action you, you I'm pretty sure you know what an action is. Uh, but this is gonna be a sequence of actions. So for a sequence of actions, we need an array inside the sequence. Uh, one of the actions is rotate to, so we're gonna rotate to a certain angle. This angle, the x, uh, the angle of the x axis is dot pi divided by two. So uh, that is 90 degrees in radians. Uh, all these angles are in radians, so that's just 90 degrees. For y, that's zero, and for z, that's zero. Uh, we're not rotating on any other axis, we're just rotating this way, not this way, or we're not like, you know, spinning it around. Uh, the duration is just how long it lasts, 0 0.5 seconds, just half a second should be enough. We're gonna copy it. Uh, remember, make sure the comma is not on the other one, on this last one here, the comma is just you know, for a list. And then we're gonna rotate back to, uh, to zero, 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 rotation or the duration is just also 0 0.5. We're also going to have it ease uh, ease out. So basically it slows down near the end of the action. So uh, it just makes it, you know, more, it makes it a bit smoother and more realistic. So rotate action dot timing mode equals to dot ease out. And then we're going to get the arm to run this action. And then we need a rotate action. Now I, I know for a fact that the, uh, this entire rolling thing, uh, we haven't actually created the rolling you know, logic. We haven't done it yet, but I do know it's gonna last for a total of three seconds. So I'm gonna set a timer, schedule a timer uh, of three seconds. It's not gonna repeat. And inside this is a block when the uh, timer is up. So after the three seconds, and we're gonna have some code just to, and we're gonna do self.rolling equals to false. Whenever we have a closure like this, uh, or like, you know, these code braces inside a function. We need to actually reference the game view controller as self, uh, just because that's how it is. Uh, as for the arm, uh, let's, I, that should be, uh, it should be able to roll again. So let's, uh, let's run the card. Uh, we're about half an hour in, but we should be done soon. All right, well, I guess I have to drag it across. There we go. And it is not rolling. That is uh, a very intriguing issue. Let us uh, check the code because there's probably some sort of um, mistake that I made. Uh, one, actually, uh, this is a good lesson. Uh, I'm gonna print and see if this is happening. So function called, oh, I misspelled it, but it's fine. So printing actually printed to this console here. On the bottom right, this is like, uh, button here and actually print stuff out in the console. So print uh, And then if we if that passes Then I'm just gonna I don't know, some other <laughs> random text Let's see if clicking actually works because that seems kind of odd to be honest Oh Up oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, so it is is being called Function called, but something's happening. Hmm, I wonder what it could be. Rolling is, let's see. So rolling, okay, we can go to prints because we know that something is up. Ah, now I found the issue. If a money is less than zero, hmm, that's not right. We should have at least zero uh, money, or at least we should have more than zero dollars to be able to actually roll. So if you picked up on that mistake, good job. <laughs> That was a bit of a dumb mistake by me, but yes, let's uh, drive that across and try it. There you go. And I'm trying to spam on it. Oh, you have to wait for three seconds. I'm gonna do that again. Oh, you can roll it again um, after three seconds. So yeah, so it's a bit of a cooldown. So if you tap within the three seconds, it doesn't do anything. It's kind of hard for me to show you how it works because I can't actually show myself tapping. Um, this is out of the camera, as you can probably imagine. Um, 
And otherwise, let's, uh, let's just do a bit of math. Now, for the math, I'm actually going to go uh, record something separately where I can explain the logic behind the, the different reels rolling. So that's something I'm going to get back to you on. So until then, I'll see you back with this code. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to break the animations into two parts. We have the full 360 degree turns, which really just shows that the reel is spinning. It doesn't really do anything. But we have the important part here, which is the offset, the incomplete turn, which is going to take us from the old face to the new face. So let's say we're going from this face to this face. Um, by the way, each face is assigned uh, a value if you never, if you didn't realize. You know, the real indexes is basically just the, uh, the different values of each face. Uh, it's just for us to keep track and see if, you know, we got anything that, that is going to have us, you know, win each face. Anyways, so when you rotate it, of course, it's going to be a random, it's going to be random, right? So let's say two, the app store icon is our random face that we've chosen. So for the random, for the full turns, we basically want the, the real on the left to spin three times, one of the middle to spin six times, and one on the right to spin nine times. So each reel progressively has more full turns to do. This is basically just so, you know, one, one, the, one, the real on the left takes less time from a real on the right, just builds up to that suspense. So the, full, the amount of full turns that we're going to do is pretty much real or index index plus one times three. We're adding one to the index, uh, the index being each element in the array. So this is zero, one, and two. The one on the left is, you know, index zero. That's how arrays work. But because the indexes uh, start at zero, we want them to start at one because zero times three is zero, but we want it to at least spin three times. So add one to that. That's essentially it. And then you just have to add two pi, which is equal to 360 degrees. It's just that we're using radians because that's what SceneKit uses. Okay, that's the full rotations. Now for the incomplete, the offset, um, all we have to do is take the difference between the different values. So from the to go from the old to the new value, we have to, that's a difference of two. So we basically have a new value minus the old value, right? And then we're gonna multiply that by two pi, a full rotation divided by the amount of faces. So essentially, one of these is one increment, right? It goes, it's one step from here to here, for instance. Now, because we have four faces, we can do a bit of math and this is actually equal to 90 degrees, also known as pi over two. Right. Um, we're just doing two pi over faces in case, you know, maybe if you want more faces or less faces, uh, you can change up the number and it will work. It's just easy for you to change. And so basically it has to do two 90 degree turns. So 90 and 90 for a total of 180 degrees. So you can just add the full rotations and the half rotation to uh, just add them together and you get the amount of uh, rotations that you need to do. Okay, so what if what if the old value is less than the new value? We're going from here to here. Well, we just need to add five. We just or we we just add four. The amount of faces that we have, and so now the value would be five, right? The new value would be five. Now. It may seem strange, but if you think about it, from the old value to a new value, how many steps do you have to do? One, two, three. Three steps. Now, if we take five and uh, and subtract the old value from it, five minus two, five minus two equals three, which is the amount of steps that we have to do. So adding the amount of the total amount of faces to the old value, um, or the new value, sorry, basically just makes it so it's essentially the same. As um as anything, and that basically just works. That is essentially all that we need to consider. And yeah, that's pretty much all the math that we have to do. Uh, actually, one other thing is the uh, the duration, right? We want the left reel to spin more than or to take less time than, than the reel on the right because it's spinning less. That's essentially just this. But you just do index 
plus one times one. You can change this one to whatever uh, value you want. If you want each thing to take two seconds or three seconds, you know, you can change that value. And that's it. That's all the math that we have to do. Yes, so after the, all that maths, I hope you're uh, I hope you're not too confused, but yes, this is that is some math I just, you know, might as well think up about when I was creating the thing. Anyways, uh, let's uh, get ahead and turn that math into code. So, uh, as I may have said before, I haven't actually recorded it yet, so I don't exactly know what I'm going to say. But yes, yeah, so we're going to loop through the uh, different real indexes. Uh, the real indexes up here, I'm just going to explain it just briefly again. So, real indexes dot count. So once you loop through each of them, um, we're gonna store the old slot index uh, as the real indexes and just gonna access uh, that index in each you know real index. Uh, this zero dot dot less than symbol basically just means it goes from zero to however many real indexes there are. So that's free. Uh, but you exclude the, the last number, which is three, so you get zero to two. So you've got zero, one, and two. And when you're accessing array, that's perfect. Um, so, of course, these different indexes are representative of each real. So you've got three reals, perfect for each real. And then we're going to generate a new slot index, which is just a random number uh, in just like this, uh, zero dot dot less than real faces. So this is just generating a number between 0 to zero and 3, uh, 0 and 4, excluding 4, so you've got 0 to 3, which is, you know, four numbers, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So that's just one for each icon uh, on the uh, on each real. So real indexes uh, i equals to new slot index. Actually, new slot index can be a constant as well. Um, and then, of course, as I said before, there are two things we need to have in full rotations. Uh, and that's essentially, I'm going to have to convert this into CG. Actually, let's just remove this first so it's easier for me to explain. So we're going to do, uh, you know, the first one has the one on the very left, the real on the very left has three rotations, middle is uh, six rotations, and then nine rotations, of course. So that's three multiplied by i, but because i starts at zero, you want to actually add one to it. So, so then that means you know you start off with three times one rather than three times zero. Uh, so then you multiply that by. Or actually, I'm gonna have to encase this inside a CG float because that's what the uh, the animation or the action requires. It wants a CG float number. So then we multiply that by dot pi times two. I'll put that in some other brackets so it's uh, easier for me to show you what it looks like. So two pi uh, or pi times two is basically just a freeze up 360 degrees. And then of course we want the, uh, the rotation offset, which is the incomplete rotation, which is a CG float off. Uh, and then we're gonna do the, we're gonna grab the new slot index take away the old slot index from it, and then uh, we're gonna add, if the uh, old slot index is actually higher than the new slot index, so old slot index is more than new slot index, if that's the case, then we, uh, then what we do is we uh, add four, otherwise we add zero, and then uh, outside of the CG float, we just multiply it by, um, by, you know, dot pi times two, and then we divide it by uh, a CG float version of the amount of real faces. So this here just means one a quarter turn or ninety degrees. Actually, why not? Why do we need to make it so complicated? We can just oh, I just did something. <laughs> Let me just, uh, I think I just hit Command W, which closed the thing. Let's uh, go back into that. Uh, and so this just should be pi uh, divided by two, which is 90 degrees. So uh, that should be it. 
and then we're going to create spin action, uh, SCN action, that rotate by this time, we're rotating by an angle, not to an angle, uh, and that's just basically the full rotations for the x axis, full rotations plus the amount of uh, uh, rotation offset. Y and Z values are zero, and the duration is just going to be a uh, time interval of, uh, you're going to have to grab that I statement. Uh, okay, it's the uh, same as this, right? Uh, that we can get with that three times. So the first uh, reel has one second, next two seconds, third three seconds. And then uh, we're going to have a spin action. Uh, give that the timing mode of dot uh, ease, ease out so it slows down towards the end of the animation. And then finally we get the reels, the axis, the uh, by you know the index. And then we run the action of the spin action. That should finally be enough uh, of what we need. So we run the code. Uh, let me just make it full screen because so Playgrounds just doesn't like uh, that very much. Okay. And then I'm just going to run it. Oh, and boom. It works quite well. And it's randomized. And I can roll it again uh, when I want to. That is perfect. Uh, and the other, I guess the one other thing that uh, I need to do is check if we have one or not. So, then we're going to do self.check for wins inside the timer. Check for wins is going to be a function where we just check if we've won. We're going to create an if, an if statement inside this, and we're going to do if real indexes dot all satisfy, and so we're just going to check if all of uh, the indexes satisfy a certain uh, condition. So, this condition is dollar zero, so it's going to basically this function loops through each uh, index, and then it will check if that value is equal to real indexes, indexes dot first. And that essentially checks if all of them are the same as the first one, which therefore just means, ju just checks if all of them are the same. If that's true, uh, we're gonna check, we're gonna switch, do a switch statement of the real indexes. I'm just gonna, uh, the first one at least, and we're just gonna check um, what value it is. Uh, so we're going to check if it's zero. If it's zero, then we're just going to add, you know, five dollars if it's one. Uh, in this case, we're actually going to win. So one equals to true. And then uh, we can actually change the scene views, uh, scenes background. So scene.background.contents equals to UI color. Uh, and then we're going to have a, another one of those numbers. Uh, 0 0.295, 0 0.571, and 0 0.1 that's the uh, that's the numbers that we want for the color. And then case two, uh, then if it's uh, some other icons, uh, by the way, case one is basically the winning icon, which is you know the ducks. Um, so we're gonna add 30 to the money, and then if this for free, maybe we're just going to add maybe $10. And then we need to have a default case because there is a lot of numbers in the world, an infinite amount actually. Uh, so for any other number, which is basically impossible in this case because we only have numbers between 0 and 3, we're just going to put a break statement inside. And then after that, uh, we're also going to check uh, outside of this you know, if statement for if we've won, if the money is less than or equal to zero, uh, if we've run out of money, that is, uh, then we are also going to change the scene's background to uh, 0 0.74, 0 0.189, and 0 0.358. That's just a red color. The other one is like a green color. All right, so let's uh, try this out and see if we can get some slots in. and. Uh, by the way, when we're spinning this, we're actually, uh, the money's not actually updating. Oh, have you won though? Oh. 
All right. Well, uh, actually, just so we can you know have a better uh, way of actually checking, let's just finish this off. Uh, up the top of the thing, we're gonna add those combined uh, things so we can pass the data over. So one's an update money event. So pass through subject int never. Basically, we're just passing an int into the event so we can pass that uh, money data, how much money we have. One for game over. Um, and that's void because we don't really need to pass any additional information into it. And then we have the basically same one, but for winning. So uh, when we've won, we can do a win event under the uh, check for wins for the uh, right case. Dot send, and that's it. Uh, when we've lost, when we do our game over event. Dot send, and that's it. And then up the top, we're kind of scrolling up and down where we uh, create the uh, money variable. I'm actually going to add some curly braces and it did set observer. So whenever this money value has changed, I can actually uh, trigger the update money event. Send, and we just send in the new money value. And that should be all we need. Now back in uh, content view, we need to actually receive and handle those. So just anywhere, any view, I'm just going to do it outside of the Z stack. Just going to add three modifiers on receive. Uh, this one is for update money. This one's how much money we have. Uh, so then self.money equals to money. So we're just changing the money up here. So then it updates the text. Oh, that's a bit weird. Okay, let's just uh, paste that twice. Now we need a one event. Okay. Win, win event, there we go. Uh, and game over event. Uh, in this case, we don't have any information to pass in. So we just delete that money in stuff. Wait for when we win, set one to true. And for game over, we just do game over equals to uh, true. Now, there's a few things that we should probably check. First of all, let's just check once you run out of money. So uh, we're going to set money to one in game view controller. So we only have one chance at <laughs> making money. If, we, if that does happen, I'm actually going to be quite lucky here. Oh, App Store, App Store. <laughs> okay, so that money just went from zero and then we just got 10 extra dollars and that just happened. You can see the money changing on the bottom right corner anyway. Honestly, that was just luck, so I'm going to have to restart it. Um, that is interesting. I did not expect that to happen. Oh. That is weird because I did not. Why is that game over thing happening so prematurely? I will have to uh, look into that. Maybe there is a. Uh, ah, uh, there we go. I plus three. Uh, in the spin action, the duration, I put in I plus three, should be I plus one. There we go. That should solve it. Let's uh, try that again. Uh, I can drag, okay, it's a bit annoying, but there we go. Okay, so we instantly run out of money and game over. The background also changes, amazing. Uh, we've already tried out what happens when you, uh, when you earn money. So let's, uh, let's try the uh, other option. So let's set money back up to 10. And then to check for whether or not we've won, um, we're gonna go into the new slot index when we're you know, doing all that math. Just comment out the code uh, pass the equal sign and then set the number to one. That way we can just override uh, from a random number to the actual winning uh, number. So there we go. And then I'm just gonna uh, roll the slots, three ducks. It it looks like a you know a complete accident, but no, it's completely forced. Um, I mean, the math works so well, but yeah, I mean, it says you want a WDC scholarship. And I mean, it's working. So what else do we need to add? Nothing else really. So let's, uh, I'm going to end this, but I'm also going to show quickly show you how it looks on an iPad. Now, since this is all being saved on iCloud uh, automatically by Swift Playgrounds, I can just go over to my iPad and screen record. So let's uh, 
in this recording and I'll see you on the iPad. All right, so we're, uh, we're recording now on the iPad. Um, and so, well, we can see that the uh, different playgrounds of the uh, have appeared because they're being synced by iCloud. Of course, we've got <laughs> Never Gonna Give You Up, if you picked up on that. Yes, it's a Rickroll. And of course, you've got Jackpot 3D, which is what we're going to look for, or what we're going to open up. So we've got a playground. Uh, of course, everything looks uh, quite similar to the Mac playgrounds. If, you're, if you've been uh, doing this on a Mac or on an iPad the entire time, you would know what it looks like. Anyways, speedometer icon, disable the enable results. And then we're going to run the code. All right, so, you know, we're rolling it. It works, <laughs> I've, uh, it's still forced. So I'm just gonna go over into Game View Controller because we can actually change the code here uh, as per usual. And let's just uh, change it to something that's not as ran, that's not as, you know, forced so we can see what it looks like. All right, so we start with $10, we roll it. And boom, it, I mean, it works. There's nothing else I can really say. Like, we've tested out the logic, so uh, of course, this is a game of pure chance. Oh, we almost won. And that's it for creating the jackpot game in Swift Playgrounds. However, if you are planning on submitting a project to the Swift Tune Challenge this year, you will need to create a .swiftpm file or a Swift Playgrounds app. To do that, all we have to do is open up Xcode, make sure we're on version 13.3, and create a new Xcode project with a Swift Playgrounds app. Now, another way to do this is to choose a new app on Swift Playgrounds 4 when you create a new project, but we're not doing this all over again. That's not very practical, is it? So if you already have your Swift Playgrounds project, you can always just copy the code over. And that's what we're gonna do. So let's create a new Xcode project. I'm going to select the Swift Playgrounds app template under iOS. I'm going to call this Jackpot 3D uh, app. I'm going to hit next and create. Now, when it opens up, this window here is where you can just change the different settings of your uh, app, but that's not what we're going to focus on today. So I'm going to head over to content view and I'm going to go over to the Swift Playgrounds project and I'm going to copy the code in content view and paste it in here. Since we are still using the same, the same content view struct, it will still work. So I'm going to close these windows because it is severely lagging my computer. And other than that, we will need to actually create a new file. So I'm going to right click on the uh, view hierarchy. We're going to create a new file and we're going to select a Swift file and call this game view controller. There we go. I'm going to select the game view controller in the playgrounds file and copy it over. That should be almost everything done. But one last thing is we need to, if I can move all these windows out of the way, all we need to do is go back to the Swift Playgrounds file, right click on it and show package contents. Then we can select the contents folder and go into private resources and drag in the game.scn file. They'll automatically generate a resources folder, but uh, that's fine. That just contains the external files that we're using. Then we can choose to run it on a simulator or a device if you're connected to one but I'm going to choose the 11 inch simulator and hit run. Uh, the 11 inch iPad Pro simulator, that is. Uh, it should be running and launching actually. And let's see if, it's, if this loads. And there we go. The app has loaded. We can click and uh, run the jackpot. Oh, we didn't win this time. Let's try again. <laughs> and we didn't win either. But we can pan around, we can do pretty much all the other things. And if you do wanna hook up your iPad to, uh, and to your computer and run it, that's also really good if you wanna test, for example, AR projects or augmented reality projects. Now, I'm gonna stop this and 
that is pretty much how you create a .sovpm file or .sovpm project. Now, um, if you're planning on submitting a project to the Swift Student Challenge, I hope you uh, win the Swift Student Challenge. Otherwise, well, let's just head out to outro and that's really it. So I'm gonna stop recording. Thanks for watching. I hope this tutorial gave you a good insight into Swift Playgrounds and how to create a functioning game with it. You can use what you've learned here and create an AR Playground. There is also another tutorial on how to create an app and upload it to the App Store. Of course, I highly encourage you to go out there and make your own apps rather than using these simple projects in these tutorials. Those videos are in the description if you'd like to check them out. Please like and subscribe if you find this uh, tutorial useful and thank you and goodbye!